conclusion Cementing two souls together Amador's crucial invention Storms of life we can weather The seclusion chamber Two souls will become one We will all three remember Dawn of the seventh sun When the seclusion chamber was first designed, the idea was to give the heir apparent time to seal his relationship with the keeper of his soul. The birth of twins to the heir apparent made the need for a second chamber both obvious and critical. Once we began the excavation, widening the natural declivity into the second chamber, we discovered a thin wall of stone at the end of the corridor. It led to four small narrow spaces impractical for instruction. They were made into additional rooms to accommodate the needs of any Estolian wishing to have their seclusion within the temple. It didn't require much further work, and I was most joyous when the slave ship came aground at Pirate's End, and so many of the sons of Zacharias found their soulmates and made use of them. That spurred me to add these final words to my capitulo. We will never know if Deity planned for us to use those chambers in this way, or if we merely found the best use for those narrow and otherwise impractical spaces, and ended up pleasing Deity with our initiative. Cornelius Tarsus Postscript to Capitulo 9 Shania looked around her. Where were they? To one side was a bedchamber, and to the other a room for eating with a low table. The room was illuminated with candles. All these details she absorbed in a moment before turning to look at Tremaine. He was beautiful in his religious robes. Though identical to his brother, she would never confuse them. Tremaine had wisdom in his eyes, and a steely power in his expression that his brother didn't possess. He led her to the table and helped her to sit on the luxurious pillows. Once she was settled he sat down next to her and picked up the two glasses on the table, handing her one of them. He held it aloft, saying something in his language to her. A toast. She didn't know what he said, but she raised her own glass and then sipped at the wine, pausing to look down at the beverage in awe. He touched her arm and extended to her a segment of fruit. She looked into his eyes smiling at him as she took the proffered fruit. Like the wine, the flavor of the fruit was exquisite. When they finished the fruit and the wine, he stood and helped her to her feet. She was nervous. Her life would never be the same after tonight. Like the two twins, realizing the bittersweet separation ahead of them, so too, her years of caring for Lyarana were also at an end. The future was not yet recorded in the story of her life, but the upcoming events would hold surprises and experiences unlike anything before this moment. She followed Tremaine into the bedchamber. He turned to her, his hands going around her waist. She looked up at him, seeing the change in his expression. His eyes darkened while he looked at her, and then he was kissing her, the warmth of his lips over hers, causing her heartbeat to trip over itself in response. When he pulled back a few inches, he spoke, his words making no sense to her. When he saw her lack of comprehension, he reached up to caress her face, his actions telling her what his words probably conveyed. The warmth of his expression sifted through her entire body, settling within her hips. He set his hands on her shoulders, and slowly turned her away from him. He pushed her hair to one side so he could kiss the nape of her neck, and then fumbled with the dress, pulling at the laces, pushing at the sleeves. The minute he figured the fasteners out, her dress drooped before his hands came around her waist and he cupped her small breasts. He whispered something before kissing the skin behind her ear. He gripped the fabric of her dress and guided it down off her body. In moments she was wearing only a simple undershift. He dropped one more kiss onto the nape of her neck before stepping away from her. She swiveled to look at him. He kissed her again briefly prior to lifting his hands to start removing his clothing. He began with the black sash carefully unpinning it before setting it on the table next to the bed. He untied the golden cord around his waist, setting it next to the sash before shrugging out of the religious robes. Under the robes, he wore a simple shift like her own. He folded his robes and placed them on top of the sash and golden cord. When he was done, he crossed back to her, pulling her into his arms to kiss her. She returned his kisses, the bottled emotions of the last few days finding an outlet in the passion flaring between them. She could taste the wine and the fruit on his tongue, he could taste the same. The warm musky smell of his skin filled her senses, 
he pulled her under shift up and over her head, exposing her breasts to his view in the dim illumination of the candles. Both of his hands explored the small round globes of her breasts. He stepped back, and for a moment she felt the shiver of rejection until she realized why he moved away. He pulled away so he could remove the last of his clothing. Her eyes met his as she followed his example and removed her own garments, kicking them to the side of the room. She went to the bed, and pushed back the bedclothes, turning to look at him. He smiled softly before climbing onto the bed, pulling her against his naked body. The explosion of passion between them flared out of control. In moments they were embracing, legs entangled, bodies melding in a burst of sensation and sharing. She had to curtail the desire to dig her nails into his flesh, as she cried out in pleasure, awed at the feeling of mutual possession. His deep throaty exclamation joined hers, and the pulsing rush of warm pleasure within her told her she was his. Reluctantly, slowly, he pulled away from her, taking his weight off her body. She half climbed onto him, smiling down at him, sighing heavily with the memory of his possession dancing through her mind making her want to cry out in remembered pleasure. He spoke softly then, his hands caressing her hair, her back, her shoulders. She could understand him. My whole life, he said, I have known it was my duty to find a woman and gift her my soul on my thirtieth birthday. I have known this was a necessary step in my life, and the blessings I would reap as a result would be immeasurable. I knew it was an essential part of my spiritual development, and critical also for Estolia. I could not run this nation if I did not have a woman to keep my soul, to guide me through her sweet presence. He broke off what he was saying to pull her close against his body, to crush her to him. What I did not understand, what was never clear to me, what my uncle did not explain was how exquisite it would feel to have you take my soul. Everything my predecessors have done, everything in the Capitulos, every thought, every critical point they made, the entire purpose of Estolia, is this. He paused, his eyes darting back and forth, as if searching for the correct words. This completion, this soul-satisfying connection between two living souls. He brushed the hair back from her face, cupping both sides and looking at her as if this was his first vision of her. We do not fulfill our obligations to satisfy some agreement made more than three hundred years ago. We do it because it is worth it. He laughed and said, Our children will follow and keep the promise of Zacharias, and their reward will be this, the fulfillment of the promises of deity. The seclusion chamber, two souls will become Shania, my life is yours. My purpose in life revolves around the relationship we have and will develop over the years. He took a deep shuddery breath when he finished speaking. I understand you, she marveled, her hand tracing over his face, her internal muscles clenching at the memory of his intimate invasion. You hold my soul, Shania, so you can understand me. You will need to learn our language to understand anyone else, but you will learn it quickly. We will be together for our entire life. As you are mine, I am yours. In the morning the slanting sun outside woke her. She propped her head on her hand and looked at the man asleep next to her. He had the bristles of unshaved whiskers. His face was well formed, with the perfection of some of the statues of gods she'd seen in her time. She remembered the feel of his body and couldn't help the low moan of pleasure at the memory. His eyes opened and he smiled. It was not long before her memory was augmented by the feel of his body within her own yet again. The skin of her face was stinging with the friction of his whiskers by the time her body was ringing with the pleasure he brought to her. She wallowed in the sense of his penetration the pleasure, the sure knowledge that she would, in the fullness of time, feel the burgeoning of their child within her body. Finally, after they both came down from the pinnacle of pleasure that reverberated through both of their bodies, he pulled her to her feet and embraced her. Smiling at her, he said, My blessings are much greater than my brother's. He handed her a simple dress to don, while pulling his religious garments on.
she followed him out into an enchanting garden. A couple of young trees were climbing towards the sun, the thin crevasse between two peaks of the mountain providing this perfect secluded garden. The sound of a masculine voice caught her attention and she turned, surprised to see Liarana and Antiochus, but suddenly it made sense. They were both in the same region of this temple, their chambers were next to one another. As twins, they would want to share this special time. She welcomed her former mistress, who looked as overcome by Antiochus as Shania was overcome by Tremaine. She went over to Liarana and embraced her, while the two brothers also embraced. You are well? Who could predict, a few weeks ago, when our fortunes took such a turn for the worse, that we would be blessed in such a way? Shania smiled at her mistress, remembering the horror she felt when she saw Liarana's golden tresses floating in the impersonal swirling waters of the breached cargo hold. She thought she'd lost her mistress and all hope, but she was saved, and they had these two extraordinary men for the rest of their lives. As I understand it, Liarana, you will become the queen of this land, Shania stated. And your Tremaine will become the actual leader of this land, Liarana said archly. We are truly blessed. The seclusion chamber, two souls will become one. We will all remember, dawn of the seven sun, eternal fire's ember, eclipsing the land sun. Estolians we are, keep Zachariah's word, as steady as the stars. The promises incurred.